We see underscores a lot in our Python code, sometimes in variable names, but sometimes in some strange places. This week I want to show you uses for the underscore that you're probably not aware of and some reasons when you should and shouldn't use it. Welcome to another MatPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. I just wanted to let you know, if you did not see our post last week, that due to current constraints, MetPy Mondays are going to be produced twice a month until sometime in 2024 when the program will be evaluated. So we're going to have this week, and then we'll be on an every other week schedule, not exceeding twice a month after this. But what I wanted to talk about this week seems like a rather strange topic, which is the character underscore. It's used a lot of times when we're naming our variables, but sometimes we see it used in other places, and some of these you'll be familiar with, but I'm guessing a fair number of them you won't be or won't know why they're used in the way they are. And this can really let you write some clearer code, some more powerful code, or code that makes more sense when incorporated into a library, say. Okay, so the first reason that you might use an underscore is storing the last last evaluation result. So for example, one plus two, we get three. Now I want to do something else with that. I can say underscore plus seven and I get 10. Or if I just print underscore, I've got 10. So it is the result of the last evaluation. Now, I should say it's the result of the last evaluation that wasn't assigned. So, for example, if I say a is 1 plus 1, and then I print underscore, it's still going to be 10. I didn't have any return from that that was not captured and assigned. So it's pretty handy. Maybe not necessarily in your program but, or your script, but especially when you're just working in the interpreter, working in the notebook, this is a really handy little tool to keep from having to retype something and do another operation to it. it. Let's you use the interpreter sort of like a calculator, which is sometimes what we need when we're rapidly iterating, prototyping, or developing. I would say that a, a subcategory of that is when we're looping. So a lot of times we'll do things like say for i in range five and do something. Well, I is a pretty useless variable here. And we don't like useless unused variables. And you might be saying, well, okay, I'm gonna make this an F string that has I times two. Okay, so now I've used I, but it's still a very generic name unless we give it something else, but we may not care what it is and we can use an underscore for that. I don't see this very commonly, but I have seen it. So for I in range, or for underscore in range five, we're going to print underscore times two and we get the same result. So that's a related use as to storing the last evaluation result. One of the reasons I use the underscore the most is to ignore things. And you've seen me do this in many, many MetPy Mondays. But let's say that I've got a calculation. It could be some of our thermodynamic calculations that return temperature and pressure uh, or return multiple things. But this function that I wrote, my calc, is going to return three items. Let's say I only want the first and the last. I don't care about the middle value. Maybe it's uh, an index or just something that I don't need. Well, I could say a, b, c equals my calc. Use that unpacking syntax that I love in Python so much, but I'm never going to use the variable b. And we've already established that we don't like unused variable names. So I can instead use underscore. And this will pass the linter and you won't get a complaint about unused variable names. And now we don't have anything stored for b. All right, another common use for the underscore is to avoid reserved 
word name conflicts. So this would be something like, I want to pass a variable that contains a, a class in my schedule, let's say a student schedule. Well, if we type class, or we type list, or we type any of a great number of reserved words, you see they turn green because that means something special to Python. So I would put a single underscore at the end to avoid that name conflict, and then my class is thermodynamics. So that avoids that. Similarly, you could do list is something, and so on. Again, you don't have to use this trick a lot, but it is better, according to the standards, than abbreviating or slightly changing the spelling of something to just use a postpended single underscore. Okay, so that's a postpended underscore. What about a prepended underscore? Well, that denotes, or is used for denoting internal variables, functions, etc. Okay, so let's say that I am working on a library that my cohort is going to use in my lab, or my students are going to use, or I'm working on MetPy. Well, we probably are going to break up a big complex function or calculation into a lot of calls to little sub-functions that are simple and easy to test. That's a key thing with any software, but especially with MetPy, is the testability. So I could have my subcalculation. In this case, it's very sophisticated. It returns a single number. But then, what if somebody starts calling and depending on that, and we never intended for it to be used by the user? We intended for them to do something like call calc, that returns some various operations that use subcalc. So I expect my user to call calc. I never expected them to call subcalc. Well, what we could do is put an underscore leading that name. And we would put an underscore here. That leading underscore says this is really an internal variable name, an internal function name. It's something that you as the user should not be using unless you are very careful and know exactly what you're doing because that's not going to be guaranteed to be stable as part of the API. It's internal use. It's something that the programmers for that library are going to be changing. And it's also a nice way to say, hey, don't mess with this. Uh, now you can, it, this is not strictly enforced though, because you, you can do this. You can call underscore methods. One caveat, I would say, is if you import star, so if from metpy.calc I import star, which is generally not a great practice anyway, it actually won't import any of those things beginning with an underscore. So I couldn't call underscore subcalc. Now if I import metpy.calc as mp, I can, or it's mpcalc, I can still call mpcalc dot underscore subcalc. That will work. But again, you should be thinking about it very carefully if you are using a single leading underscore function or variable in your program. Now there's also the double underscore, and that leads us into our next use, which is magic. And this is not the percent Stein magic that we're used to in the notebook, but things like underscore in it, double underscore. So double underscore, dunder, underscore, underscore, name, underscore, underscore. These are things that you should never create. You should just use them as the docs say. And in fact, probably the most common use, I'll just go ahead and make this a code block here. Is going to be the if dunder name 
is equal to dunder main, then we do things. This is a method that uses these magics. This is a syntax that uses these magics to say, am I the called program? Or am I being imported? If I'm imported, I don't want to run and do these things. If somebody has typed Python, my name.py at the command line, this will evaluate to true and we do things. So that's probably the most common place that you'll see double underscores in a typical script if you're not doing library development. All right, this one, we're coming close to the end here, is visual numeric separation. I don't see this used very much, and I really wish I would see it used more. So let's pick a large number like 1,365,233. That's relatively hard to read, but we can use an underscore. So typically we separate into three number groups like this. It appears the exact same to Python. In fact, we can do math, we can do all the things we're used to, but it reads much nicer to you as the human that's having to read code. You don't have to count how many digits there are to know what order of magnitude you're working in. So that's a really nice little trick. And the last one, which we're not going to give an example of because it gets into a little bit more advanced object-oriented programming than we have time for in this MetPy Monday, is name mangling. Name mangling is a double pre-underscore, and it's used to prevent namespace collisions when you're subclassing a class. But if you need to look into that, there's certainly plenty of resources on that, or we can discuss it. But we generally don't stray too far into the deep object-oriented programming in MetPy Mondays, as most of the time you don't need to write classes of your own. You can just use ones from a library, and you're certainly not going to be worried about name mangling when you're using a class from a library like MetPy. So these are several ways in which you can use the underscore to make your Python life better. I hope that you found it useful, and I'll see you on the next MetPy Monday.